Thank you very much for being a part of our service today. We're so excited that you decided to be a part of the Mount Orange family. And today we do have a message from the Lord. The Lord is speaking, but my question to you is, who are you listening to? Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you want to do. We ask you to continue to watch over us. You continue to give us, Lord, all that we need in order for us to be what you called us to be at this particular point in history. We praise, uplift, magnify, and glorify your holy name. Give me the preaching power that I need to deliver this message to those who are here now and into the future. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. But if you do, if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to turn them to Jeremiah chapter number 28, verses 5 through 9. And this is what it says in Jeremiah chapter number 28. It says, Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priest and uh, all the people who were uh, standing in the house of the Lord. In the prophet, Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord feel uh, the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon uh, the vessels of the house of uh, the Lord and all the exile. But listen now to this word that I speak to you hearing in uh, the hearing of all the people. The prophet who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. God's voice will be heard around the world. My question to you today is, who are you listening to? God is speaking so clearly to us now, but the question to all of us is, is that whose voice are we listening to? Are we listening to the voice of God? Are we hearing the voice of God? Are we hearing the, the voice of the latest Facebook prophet or the latest Twitter prophet? Are we listening to those individuals who are prophesying peace when God is, God is saying that there will be pestilence, there will be wars, there will be rumors of war. Who are we listening to? Are we listening to him to hear specifically what he has in store for us? Are we listening to him to see specifically what he's saying to us at this particular point in time? Are we allowing him to use our voices to be the echoes in the hallways of Washington, the echoes in the hallways of our local city halls, the echoes of the hallways of our communities that echo in the hallways of our homes. Whose voice are you listening to? Because I'm here to say to you today that God's voice will be heard and it will not return void. God has given us an opportunity today to spend time together in this lockdown situation. Time together with our families to pray and also time to pray to him without dealing with the hustle and the bustle of the world. And what he's saying to us today is whose voice will you listen to when you hear my voice that I have been saying from generation to generation that there will be pestilence, there will be plagues, there will be war, there will be great earthquakes, there will be all kinds of situations and circumstances. But the question is today, whose voice are you listening to? Two, we can see in God's word that God's word is active today. We can see in God's word that his word is moving forward. We can see in God's word that his word will not return void. We can see those of us who read his word, we can see where he has demonstrated his power each and every day. And may I fast forward to the end, those of us who are a part of God know that God's army know of God's kingdom. We know already that we will be victorious. We know already that we will be successful. We know already that we will win because we know that God has already given us the victory. But here in this passage of scripture, we can see Jeremiah, we can see a false prophet, and an eye, we can see both of them are in a situation where someone must speak the truth and someone must tell the other person that they are a false prophet. And this false prophet tells the people, as we look at the first parts of 28 and uh, uh, Jeremiah 28, 1 through 4, we can see there that, 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 that this prophet is saying to the people that all of 
the things that had been taken into captivity into Babylon were returned. But he was wrong. He was prophesying to be a people pleaser. And what God calls us, us to do today is not to be a people pleaser. God calls us not to be a person who just a, a yes man, uh, a person who just agrees with whatever the system is saying. We must be willing to let our voices be heard because God has placed us in those positions so that our voices can be heard. Not so that we can be silenced, not so that we can just echo what they are saying, what the systems of the world are saying. We cannot allow them to uh, speak through us. We must speak what the word of God is saying to us. One of the first points I want to make is speak the truth because the truth will uh, set you free. And we can see here, Jeremiah was willing to speak the truth and he was willing to speak the truth to the people. And I'm here to say to you, if you speak the truth to the people, that you're able to be what God has called you to be. And we can see even in speaking the truth, we can see in the 28th chapter of Jeremiah that, uh, that Jeremiah was facing the death penalty because he was willing to speak the truth because the prophets and the people were in the religious circles and those who are in the religious uh, organization decided they were going to give him the death penalty. They wanted him to be destroyed because he was speaking, speaking the truth against the city. And there are people who don't want you to speak the truth. There are people who don't want you to tell the truth. There are people who don't want you to call people into accountability because they know when they're called into accountability that they may lose their job, they may lose their position, they may lose their title. But what God is calling us to do today as Christians, we must hold people accountable for the positions of influence that God has placed them in. And yes, it's challenging, but you must be willing to speak the truth because the Bible says to us that the truth will set us free. The truth will make us free. But we must be willing in those situations, in those circumstances, to speak the truth no matter what. And Jeremiah, even though he was facing the death penalty, even though he was facing a challenging situation, Jeremiah said, I will speak the truth. And he spoke to the people and said to them, may I remind you that there were pestilence and plagues that the former prophets have said that that was going to happen. And because of those particular things, I am not going to deviate from what the other prophets have said. And what I'm saying to us today is, is that God has called us to speak the truth even though you may be ostracized. Speak the truth even though you may not be accepted for who you are and you may be not invited back to the party anymore. But the Lord is saying to you today to speak the truth. And he's looking for those who are willing to put it all on the line to do what God has called them to do. And if you're not willing to put it all on the line to do what God has called you to do, you need to step aside and let somebody who's willing to stand up and do the right thing, even though they're facing opposition, even though they're facing chaos. As Jeremiah said, I am going to speak the truth. And that's what the Lord is looking for, those who are willing to speak the truth, those who are willing to come out and say what needs to be said. He's looking for those who are willing to say that I will go, Lord, if you send me. And Jeremiah finds himself at odds against the system against the systems of the world. But Jeremiah understood that they may be able to kill the body, but they don't have the power to destroy the soul. And what I'm saying to us today is, is that God is calling us. He's calling each one of us to stand strong. He's calling each one of us to stand up for the righteousness. And yes, even uh, in situations where you find yourself all by yourself, remember that if it's you and the Lord, it's more than the whole world that's against you. I started out saying to you that the word of God, that the voice of God will be heard around the world. My question is, will he use you to speak the truth at this particular point in history? Will he use you to speak the truth in your home? Will he use you to speak the truth to your children? Will he use you to speak the truth to your community? Will he use you to speak the truth to the nations? Will he use you to speak the truth to those who empower and influence? Will he use you because he has you there in that position for a particular reason? Just like he had Jeremiah here in this particular situation. Jeremiah did not move with fear, but he moved with 
faith. And what God is looking for are those who are willing to move with faith and not with fear. He's looking for those who are willing to move forward and do what God has called them to do and not remain on the sidelines or remain in the stands cheering other people on. God is looking for those who are willing to step up to the plate and let them pitch the fastball of life at you and you slap it out of the park under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. God is looking for those who are willing to stand up and allow the voice of God to be heard around the world and he would use your voice, he would use your vocal cord, he would use your influence, he would use you to be used at this particular point. He would use your talents, he would use your abilities to transform a nation because his voice will be heard around the world. Point number two, God's voice will be heard around the world. As we look at the evening news each and every day, and as we look at the video recordings from this year, from last year, and from five years ago, we see that there's senseless killings that are taking place, and there's people who are abusing their power and influence in all kinds of situations. What we must understand is that God refused to allow the truth not to come forth. Yes, a lie may rise for a moment, but that lie will not last forever. That lie will be exposed. And what I'm saying to us is the truth. I'm talking about God's word will prevail. God's word will be heard around the world. But the question is, will you allow him to use you so that his voice can be heard around the world? And out of the situation with Mr. Floyd, Mr. George Floyd, and his, his, his situation, yes, it was tragic, but isn't it amazing that God would take a situation, just one situation, and change the course of history? Uh, isn't it amazing that he would use uh, the death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to, to change the course of history? Isn't it amazing that he would use uh, the death of others uh, in, in our history, Lord, that would change the course of history? But what's so important is to us today as a Christian community that use the death of Jesus Christ to change the course of history. And I'm here to say to you that he wants to use you to change the course of history. He wants to use your voice but because you're in a position of influence to change the course of history. He'll make sure the right people are around you to help you be successful. But the question is when you step forward and do as Jeremiah did in the middle of chaos, in the middle of confusion, in the middle of opposition, in the middle of being outnumbered, Jeremiah was willing to step forth and do what God has called him to my question to you today, are you willing to step forth and be used by God so that his voice may be heard around the world? And you're saying that I don't travel around the world, but can he use your voice so that he be heard in your family? Can he use your voice so that he be heard with your own voice? Can he use your voice so that he can be heard in your neighborhood? Can he use your voice so that he can be heard on your street? Can he use your voice to be, so that he be heard in your community, in your household, in your neighborhood? Can he use your voice so that he can be heard at City Hall? Can he use your voice so that he can be heard in Washington, Press the UN? Can he use your voice? Because if you refuse to use your voice, I'm here to say to you that God will raise up somebody who's willing to let their voice be heard so that his word can go forth. Because if his word goes forth, it will not return more. And here we see Jeremiah. He was outnumbered. But Jeremiah didn't move with fear. We can see Jeremiah found himself outnumbered in the house of God, but he did not allow him being outnumbered in the house of God to hinder him from saying what God had said for him to say. We can see that Jeremiah found himself outnumbered by another prophet but he did not allow that prophet to hinder him from doing what God had said for him to say. And what I'm saying to us today, and what I want to encourage you today, brothers and sisters, is that you cannot allow the world, even though you're outnumbered, even though you're outnumbered in your household, you're outnumbered in your social group, you're outnumbered in your community, and you're outnumbered in the world, I'm going to say that if God is on your side, it's more than the whole world that's against you. But the key thing you must understand is just like Jeremiah, even though there's false prophets who are saying all kinds of things, speak the truth and speak truth to power. Because if you speak the truth, there will be a transformation that will take place. And that's the only way that that can be healing. That's the only way that, that can be uh, uh, reconciliation is somebody must be willing to speak the truth. 
Because the truth is what sets us free. The truth is what transforms nations. The truth is what transforms communities. And the truth is what transforms families. But you must be willing to speak the truth. Because the truth will set you free. And I'm here to say to you that God's voice, which is the truth, will be heard around the world. But my question to you, who are you listening to? Who are you tuned in to on the a spiritual radio station or the, uh, the TV station from heaven? Who are you tuned in to? Who are you listening to? Who are you allowed to influence? Who are you allowed to come into your eye gates and your ear gates? Who are you speaking to? Who are you allowing to come on the inside of you? Who are you allowing to be the voice that you speak for? Here in Jeremiah, we can see here Jeremiah, even though he was outnumbered, even though they had given him the, uh, the sentence of death, even though they uh, didn't like him because he spoke the truth. I'm here to say to you that we must be willing to speak the truth no matter what. We must be willing to tell the truth and sometimes the truth hurt. But I'm here to say to you that the truth will set you free. God bless you. Thank you very much for being here with us today. I look forward to being back with you next week. God bless you.